Any power system network is subjected to disturbances at any time and place. It is considered as one of the most stochastic system ever seen by the human beings. To enhance the power system reliability, System Protection Scheme SPS is an effective tool for utilizing the power grid during rare contingencies. This method is often employed as secondary protection schemes. SPS is also termed as Special Protection Scheme. SPS is referred with different names by different users such as IEEE as System Integrity Protection Scheme SIPS, Remedial Action Scheme RAS. SPS is defined as a protection scheme that is designed to detect a particular system condition that is known to cause unusual stress to the power system and to take some type of predetermined action to counteract the observed condition in a controlled manner. During contingency condition, SPS can be used as a tool for maintaining overall satisfactory operation of the power system. SPS can be installed to maintain frequency deviation during post-contingency and it is referred as frequency control SPS or preventing the system from voltage collapse or overloading of thermal limit and it is referred as network control SPS. Characteristic of SPS SPSs are also known by other names depending on the originator like special stability controls, dynamic security controls, contingency arming schemes, remedial action schemes, adaptive protection schemes, corrective action schemes, security enhancement schemes, etc. In these schemes, depending on the type of the problem, actions such as tripping of generators, intentional islanding of the system at predetermined locations, tripping of loads will be taken. The design of SPS should be properly coordinated with the existing protection system to maximum reliability. SPS are dynamic security control systems and are designed to control power system stability in case where the uncontrolled response is likely to be more damaging than the controlled response. SPS are devised by offline analysis analysis as opposed to online real-time control. The reason behind being power system response is too fast to allow sequential control system logic. Involvement of a grid operator human intervention for corrective action should be kept to minimum compared to SCADA EMS. In certain cases, SPSs can be designed for the detection of system condition which results in overloading, voltage collapse leading to instability. This may require disconnection of single or multiple lines, generator tripping, increased HVDC power transfer capability, premeditated load shedding or other actions which may cause problem of concern. SPS initiates corrective actions in mitigating the consequences of abnormal conditions without involving the isolation of faulted elements. SPS are primarily used where the protection is employed on the capability of power system instead on specific equipment protection. SPS are designed to take special action in response to the event disturbances detailed below either individually or in combination. Transmission faults, cascading outage of lines, generator outages, sudden large load changeovers, HVDC pole blocking, the disturbance may cause following problems in power system. The solutions for the same is also detailed below. Frequency instability occurs when power system frequency varies beyond the operating limits. Corrective actions include generator tripping, rapid generation reduction through fast valving or water diversion, control of HVDC power transfer, load shedding, controlled opening of interconnection to neighboring systems to prevent spreading of disturbance, control islanding of local system into separate areas with matching generation and load etc. Voltage instability is the failure of power system to maintain its steady acceptable voltages at all buses in the system. Remedial actions include changing of generation, automatic shunt switching, control of series compensation, blocking of tap changer position of transformers, under voltage load shedding etc. Transient angular instability is the inability of the system to maintain synchronism. Preventive measures include breaking resistor, employing fax devices, reducing the mechanical power driving the generator, fast valving, disconnection of the generator etc. SPS integrates large number of switching actions in a coordinated manner. One of the essential features of SPS design is that it should provide secure and reliable communication infrastructure for exchange of data amongst monitoring, controlling and action devices. The action devices are required frequently for sending, receiving, filtering, analyzing the status and or analog measurements. For this, it is necessary to have the following requirements. Devices to support communication, compilation and analysis, analysis of data, ample bandwidth for meeting the time constraints of communication. It is reported that the available SPS are dedicated for a specific power systems. Dependability, security, selectivity and robustness are the basic criteria for which SPS is used. 
Design of SPS The design of SPS process is divided into five steps. They are system study, solution development, design and implementation, commissioning periodic testing, training and documentation. Classification of system states and contingencies. For purposes of analyzing power system security it is first of all helpful to conceptually classify the system operating conditions into system states, normal state, all system variables are within the normal range and no equipment is being overloaded. The system operates in a secure manner and is able to withstand predefined contingencies without violating any of the constraints. Alert state, if the system parameters are still within admissible ranges but the system does not anymore meet the criteria given for a secure state, i.e. it is no longer N-1 secure, the system is considered to be in an alert state or endangered state. Typically, the system reaches this state after a N-1 contingency. This state requires application of remedial actions without any delay in order to come back to the secure state, i.e. to comply with the N-1 rule. Emergency state, as consequence of contingencies beyond N-1, extreme or unforeseen contingencies, the individual variables that describe the overall system state could violate admissible operational limits and hence the system is considered to be in an emergency state a disturbed state. A system being in an em emergency state might not be able to fulfill its function with respect to consumer supply and power transits, but is not blacked out. However, there is the risk of system collapse mainly due to the loss of stability. Therefore relevant actions must be taken immediately to bring back the system into acceptable conditions. Blackout state. A blackout state is characterized by almost total absence of voltage in a certain area of the transmission system as a consequence of tripping of generating units due to abnormal variation of voltage and or frequency which occurred during the emergency state. Once the system enters the blackout state the restoration plan shall be activated as soon as possible. Restoration. The restoration plan aims to reduce the duration of power system interruptions as consequence of blackouts by re-energizing the backbone transmission system as fast as possible, which allows gradual reconnection of generating units and, subsequently, supply to customers. Prompt and effective power system restoration is essential for the minimization of downtime and costs to the utility and its customers, which mount rapidly after a system blackout. To contain normal type of contingencies the so-called N-1 rule is common practice in most large power systems worldwide. This concept is characterized by a predefined redundancy of power system elements which ensures a sufficient safety margin and robustness to operate the power system. Given that the transmission system loading is moderate also exceptional type of contingencies can often be handled due to this robustness. As long as normal and exceptional type of contingencies are secured by means of redundancy in the normal power system control capabilities e.g. PST, HVDC controls, fax controls etc. no automatic protection measures to preserve the system integrity and to avoid the violation of operational limits are required. However, manual actions have to be taken to re-establish the normal state. On the other hand it is not economical to design a power system arbitrarily redundant, in fact it is necessary to find a technical and economical trade-off between investment cost, operation cost, and power system security needs. Possible reasons that might restrain sufficient redundancy in transmission systems are, the power system spans a large geographical area, so that the application of the N-1 rule would lead to non-justifiable economical efforts. Trends such as the changeover to a competitive market environment, i.e. facilitating large electrical energy trades across wide areas, large-scale penetration of renewables and missing incentives to build power plants at locations that consider system needs as well bring the power system closer to its technical limits. The increasing stress on the existing infrastructure gradually reduces the safety margins respectively requires new infrastructure to maintain the same level of redundancy and robustness in parts of the grid the latter might be blocked due to economical reasons and or the difficulty in obtaining permits for new transmission infrastructure projects. In some power systems an overlay structure, e.g. strong HVD ceilings, are in operation or planned. Due to economic reasons these strong links might not be inherently redundant. If there is a lack of redundancy other measures are necessary to contain normal and exceptional type contingencies and to provide acceptable system performance. The entity of these measures can be pooled under the name special protection schemes. Special protection schemes are often event-based and counteract on a limited number of critical contingencies that have been identified beforehand, e.g. through offline studies. In this regard event-based means, 
that the special protection scheme is designed for operation operation only upon the recognition of a particular combination of events and is thus based on the direct detection of the event e.g. loss of a line. It anticipates unacceptable system conditions resulting from normal or exceptional type of contingencies and aims to stabilize the system in the alert state by means of dedicated automatic controls. It should to be noticed that also selected system quantities can be monitored and used to trigger the special protection scheme response based, but in contrary to system protection schemes, which will be discussed subsequently, the power system is not necessarily in an emergency state or close to instability, even though there might be a risk to enter the emergency state. Special protection schemes are often event-based and counteract on a limited number of critical contingencies that have been identified beforehand, e.g. through offline studies. In this regard event-based means that the special protection scheme is designed for operation only upon the recognition of a particular combination of events and is thus based on the direct detection of the event e.g. loss of a line. It anticipates unacceptable system conditions resulting from normal or exceptional type of contingencies and aims to stabilize the system in the alert state by means of dedicated automatic controls. It should to be noticed that also selected system quantities can be monitored and used to trigger the special protect protection scheme response based, but in contrary to system protection schemes, which will be discussed subsequently, the power system is not necessarily in an emergency state or close to instability, even though there might be a risk to enter the emergency state. For this reason special protection schemes are mainly applied in weak and or highly loaded systems where the N-1 rule is not met at least partially and where normal or exceptional type of contingencies exceed the robustness of the system and thus bring the system directly from the normal state to the emergency state or even to the blackout state. Possible applications of special protection schemes can be summarized as follows, improve power system operation, cope with operational difficulties imposed by particular power system characteristics, operate power system closer to its limits and maintaining sufficient transmission capacity during plan, plan outages, contain normal or exceptional type of contingencies in case of insufficient safety margins e.g. due to restrained possibilities to develop the transmission system properly, i.e. limited. Redundancy. In order to cope with and to minimize the impact of out-of-range contingencies, i.e. in particular to prevent a total system collapse, system protection schemes have been developed and implemented by many utilities. These schemes include a set of coordinated and mostly automatic measures to ensure fast reaction to large disturbances and to avoid their propagation through the system. System protection schemes are thus designed to initiate the final attempt at stabilizing the power system when a widespread collapse is imminent. As the risk for system collapse results mainly from the possible loss of stability system protection schemes are generally designed to contain the different power system instability phenomena, transient instability, oscillatory instability, frequency instability, voltage instability. They should take predetermined, corrective action to avoid a specific phenomenon further aggravating the power system condition by spreading through the system. Each system protection scheme is thus fundamental to preserving system integrity and providing acceptable system performance in the case of a specific phenomenon. System protection schemes are generally response-based, they use electric variables and initiate automatic stabilizing actions after the contingency has caused the measured quantities to exceed the admissible ranges, i.e. when the power system enters into the emergency state. Special protection schemes and system protection schemes together compose a defense plan. A defense plan thus can include a set of specific, event-based special protection schemes in order to avoid the violation or operational limits or the loss of stability after normal or exceptional contingencies, a set of coordinated, response-based and or event-based system protection schemes in order to avoid the loss of stability after out-of-range contingencies. The measures taken by special protection schemes or system protection schemes could be the same e.g. load shedding, generation rejection etc. but the underlying reason for their implementation is different. In a context of restrained possibility of network development and more intensive use of available generation and transmission facilities, the implementation of special protection schemes might increase in future. If a TSO relies on special protection schemes to meet the specified power system performance levels these special protection schemes must be highly reliable protection grade reliability is required, with proper redundancy of the SPS elements. The application of special protection schemes might have local, regional, or over-regional impacts. Provided that there is an influence on neighboring TSOs, the realization of special protection schemes has to be coordinated between the affected TSOs and detailed information e.g. with respect to the modeling and the settings. 
Detailed system studies are necessary to design the SPS and to assess its impacts. Basic design aspects of SPS, in general, the design process of a special protection scheme can be broken down into the following components, system study, solution development, design and implementation, commissioning and periodic testing, training and documentation. The system study is necessary to analyze the necessity of a special protection scheme, its operating functions, its regional or over-regional impacts and its coordination with other system protection and control schemes. The system study shall define among others the limitations or restrictions in force, the identifying monitoring signals with corresponding locations and set points, the reliability and dependability levels. The requirements for safety integrity level SAL and probability of failure on demand PFD by IEC 61508 have to be defined as well. Failure of the SPS to operate when required, or its undesired or unintentional operation in a case of contingency or normal condition of the power system can involve adverse impacts in system operation. Carrying redundancy or necessary local or remote backup functions out is an important requirement for reliability and safety of the system. During the design process the SPS architecture flat or hierarchical, centralized or distributed, etc. and the necessary data communication in harmony with levels of the reliability, redundancy and safety shall be determined.